All right, guys, um, I thought I'd try something new this week, <clears throat> and um, we're gonna start going around to different businesses as well. I'll still go to some national parks and museums and cool places like that, but I'm gonna go to about around to different businesses in Wyoming and talk to people about what they do for work um, and the cool things they do. Um, today I'm in Therapy Works um, with Boone Hodges. He's an occupational therapist. Therapists um, get with people who have injuries or they're coming back from surgeries or whatever um, happened to them and they help them to get better, go through the healing process. Sometimes they make hand splints, sometimes they um, make splints for other part of the body or they just help them get their muscles and ligaments and joints and tissues back to full health. So this is his office and we're going to go meet him. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Boone Hodges. Welcome. <laughs> um, you want to tell us a little bit about what occupational therapists do? Sure. So I'm an occupational therapist, uh, very similar to physical therapy. A lot of people kind of call physical therapy, uh, a variety of, of professions kind of get bulked into physical therapy. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapists, uh, different kinds of rehab aids and techs. But Occupational therapy is pretty much set apart basically because we focus on independence and function. And so whenever we work with uh, adults, children, grandparents, infants, uh, we're looking at what's going to help make that person more independent and more function, have, have, have the majority of their function back and restored. So um, one of the things we do here is we focus on shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand injuries. Uh, that includes a lot of splinting, sometimes wound care, sometimes um, it's just rehab after a, a surgery for their shoulder or, or maybe a nerve condition. Um, one of the things we're going to do today is, is make a splint for, for Dr. Haywood. Um, kind of show you guys a little bit about what's involved there, kind of what skills you might be learning now that might be applicable to a career like this. Um, and then also uh, we'll have some, some more information and dialogue about uh, what other kind of things occupational therapists do. Um, I do work in a school setting as well. And one of the, one of the things that uh, occupational therapists do in the schools for school age uh, individuals is to make sure that there's independent and functional in their education process. So that sort of, what they would do with them is a lot of times uh, occupational therapy with youth is kind of a kind of play, therapeutic play. Um, but you might be focusing on something that helps them with uh, either building strength either for their core, for their muscles in their stomach and, and sides so they can sit up in a chair properly, or maybe if there's already some limitations in the way they move, you help them move better. Um, other things you do is you help with focus, you help with attention, you help with uh, processing of sensory kind of things, so that includes sounds, touches, um, other things that might be in their environment that might distract them or, or cause, a, uh, cause a problem for them to be able to uh, get the most out of their education. So um, it also includes things like dressing and eating and feeding themselves and and being able to get up from a chair or move across a room if that's necessary. So it, it applies to a lot of different areas and and one of the most fun one of the most fun aspects of my job is is being able to work with kids because the kids are the most fun. You know they're they're always happy and they're always they're always excited to see you. Um, we're going to build a, a brace today for, for Dr. Haywood, show you guys a little bit about what's involved with that, and then while we're doing that, I'll go through a few other things that might be more relevant in a setting like this, uh, where somebody comes in after they've already been to the hospital or after they've already been to the doctor, and they're trying to take care of, of an injury or um, uh, something after surgery. So, Cool. Should be exciting. <laughs> All right, guys, so now we're going to do a little bit of artwork, some drawing. But you guys never thought you'd apply those principles to a job when you get older, but the things you're doing now in art um, actually are put to use in all kinds of jobs. <laughs> all right, Boone's going to trace my hand now. Okay. So we're, look, we're looking to make a brace, making a splint for Joe's hand and wrist and thumb. Um, just like kindergarten, come back to tracing a hand so you get landmarks, get an idea of a, of a size, and then make marks based off of where some of the joints and, and uh, 
some of the points that we want to make sure that we, we cut the material for. And then based off of that size, draw some lines so that we kind of have an idea of a pattern that we want to cut. And then where we might want a hole in that brace for that thumb to come through. You want me to introduce myself? <laughs> <laughs> And then from this pattern, I can determine the fit before I actually cut into the actual material by having the person we're making this splint for essentially try it on. So we would look at it and be able to know, to know that we're going to be able to give them an adequate fit with material, where I might need to add space, take away space before I actually utilize a piece of material to create a, uh, a basic splint. And then I use a wax crayon to actually put that pattern onto a piece of plastic. And then cut it out. So this is thermoplastic. It's a heat sensitive material that has a lot of memory. So after it heats up, it holds its form very well once it's, once it's applied and cooled down. And it's very rigid. That's why I have to use these tin snips to cut through it. And then once we put it in a hot bath, of water, it softens up to where it's super soft and, and actually almost transparent. Um, and at that, during that time, you can mold it to any shape you want, um, and and then put it on put it on your patient. So what we've got here is the uh, tracing that we did with Dr. Haywood's hand, uh, the pattern that we that we cut out as well as the actual plastics that we're going to form the splint with. Uh, so you can kind of see the stages of that process. We're going to put it in a hot pan with water and it's just under 200 degrees, so about 180, 175, 180. And it's going to cause this material to get super soft, pliable. We'll trim it up a little bit, create that hole, and then we'll put it on Dr. Haywood's hand. But in the meantime, I thought I'd show you a couple of the tools or or uh, equipment that we use as far as helping people with hand and dexterity problems. Maybe uh, they're trying to learn how to use their fingers and hands better, um, trying to get some strength back in their hand, um, as well as maybe in their arms as well. So in school, it's really important. We work with a lot of kids on handwriting. Um, we do things as it relates to how they hold their pen or pencil, how they hold a crayon. Um, and so some of these things might be helpful in that. Uh, it, just in making sure they have the strength and the ability to do those kinds of things. But we, have, we use a lot of pegboards. So these, these would be different kinds of pegboards with different size pegs. And somebody would try to put those in as quickly as they can and take them back out or pick them up and place them in their hand and try to hold as many as they can and then also work the pegs back out to their fingertips while they try to place it back into the, into the block. Uh, and then what does this, that do for the hand? So that helps to build the coordination back up in the hand. It helps maintain the arches and the lines that you see in your palm. Uh, and so it builds up these muscles that are, that are on the sides by the thumb and by the little finger. And so it helps, it helps being able to like do buttons, snaps, zippers. It helps for somebody to be able to be able to work the keys for their car or get a bottle to top off. Um, or for a young person, it helps them to be able to hold their writing utensil better. 
Um, and that's like following a hand injury or something like that? Or? Yep, or some people are even born with, with uh, injuries or, or um, weaknesses in their hands. And so we'll try to maximize the strength we can get out of that so that they'll be as successful and, and as uh, efficient in writing or using their hands for whatever they do day to day. So occupational therapy really focuses on the function, independence of a person just day to day. Uh, and then we have much smaller pegs. These are, these are very fine, almost pencil lead size pegs. Uh, there's little tiny washers, little tiny collars, and somebody would do, the, do similar exercises, but to a much more fine, um, much more, of a, much more of, a, of a fine manner in trying to work with those. And we work with speed and, and accuracy uh, as they do that as well. Uh, kind of moving up from just working those fine muscles, we can work some of the larger muscles in the wrist and hand by using things like putty. So that's pretty cool, guys. You get to play with putty for yeah. work. <laughs> Most of my work is play, <laughs> and that's one of the best things about a job. And if you can find a job that you enjoy doing that's, that's also playful, uh, it's hard to have a bad day. <laughs> so this is basically like plastic Play-Doh, and it comes in different colors, and each color is a different uh, level of resistance, or that means basically it's harder to work through. So the yellow is about medium, and so it can be difficult to just even try to pull apart, kind of like taffy. You can pull it all the way apart and it gets very soft once it gets thin, um, and it helps you know, just by using your grip, or you can twist it and roll it, and that helps with wrist strength and gripping. Uh, and there's also these little tools that they use uh, to put into the putty and then to be able to twist it and use the putty for resistance but by, use, by giving you different types of handholds. This one would be more similar to um, button sized things and pencils and pens. This one's more like a bottle top lid but you'd be able to twist that into the putty with resistance to gain strength and a little bit of coordination. This one's more like a key. So somebody with uh, a thumb joint problem or arthritis or maybe they had a, a, break, a broken wrist or finger, this would be a good exercise for them to, to get back to being able to do normal things for themselves. Um, some other fun ones for the hand are these exercise balls that have the finger holds and you put your thumb and fingers in all those, all those little rubber holes and then you're able to stretch and open your hand up as wide as you can and hold it. And then you're also able to squeeze the ball as tight as you can and hold it. So it builds all the muscles that, and, and the tendons that come through the fingers that help extend the muscles that are attached to that are getting strengthened by doing those exercises. And it helps build up that, that ability to extend and close your fist. Um, and there's another ball that's similar to that in, in style, just a little bit different way of doing that. And then these little Digiflex tools. Looks like some kind of Pokemon, huh guys? <laughs> <laughs> they should make a Pokemon themed one. Um, these Digiflex tools basically give a, an individual platform for each finger. So as you squeeze, not any one finger or two fingers can do all the work. You can see which fingers aren't cooperating. And so then if you know that they're, they're not helping, you can help pull those down and each finger gets, gets its own platform to squeeze those springs down. And you can even turn it around to make it work the thumb. And you can just do individual finger exercises or do the full grip and kind of watch for each, hand, each finger to, on the hand to do its job. But they come in different colors, again, or different, different resistances, different strengths. Um, These would be good for uh, trumpet players to get their hands back into full strength. It's a pretty good joke. 